Hello and uh, welcome to this video where I will show you how to uh, create an assignment using Turnitin in Moodle. So the first thing you want to do is go to the class where um, you want to create the assignment and you want to make sure that your editing is on. So cl click on turn editing on. And depending on which interface you've chosen, which look, which look you've chosen for Moodle, it will look slightly different. But in any case, you'll have uh, this link here, add an activity or resource. So choose the section where you want your assignment to go and click on and add an activity or resource. And scroll down all the way to the bottom, ignore the assignment at the top and choose turn it in assignment. Uh, turn uh, turn it in assignment two, sorry, and click add. So next you have to uh, design sort of the parameters for the assignment. So assignment name, quite simply, any submission type, uh, you could choose that or you could choose file upload if you want to make sure, for example, that uh, students upload something that is formatted according to a particular um, format. Uh, otherwise, text submission means they can simply copy and paste text from a Google Doc or something like that. Number of parts will always be one by default. You can't go to zero, so you have to have one part. Um, another thing that's probably important for you is display originality reports to student. Uh, we recommend that you do click yes on this because um, Turnitin can be used as a pedagogical tool where students become aware of, you know, accidental plagiarism if they can see their report before they submit the essay. They then have a chance to go and change whatever comes up as plagiarized, and they might learn something about the art of paraphrase in the meantime. Um, grade display, all of that you can ignore. Uh, I'll ignore grade as well because this is more pertinent to uh, any type of Moodle activity. Uh, here, assignment part one is our next uh, aspect of interest. If you selected two, you would presumably have multiple sections like this. Uh, for the name, I suggest changing it to something generic just so you don't create uh, confusion in your students. If there's part one, they might expect a part two to come at a later date. Part one and part two might be useful if you're doing, for example, um, uh, you know, you have students submit a draft and then a final version. You could have them all set up in the same assignment. Here are the dates. What do they mean? Start date means this is when the assignment is going to be available to students. Due date means the due date. And post date is where, um, is when the feedback will become available to students and the mark as well. So if you leave it the same as the due date, the feedback and the mark will come available as you enter them. So if you want to make sure that it stays hidden until you've marked all of your copies, for example, you could decide, you know, you're going to take a week to mark this and then choose a post date. Of course, if you don't make your deadline, you can always change the date to an even later date after you've created the assignment by simply returning to uh, edit settings here. But there's actually a faster way that I'll show you later. Next, uh, a Turnitin option you'll get is originality report options. Uh, this is where, for example, you would decide if uh, you accept late submissions. Uh, the report generation speed is something you might want to pay attention to uh, because it limits their ability to resubmit. So you could decide generate reports immediately. Students can resubmit until due date. Uh, and this way, again, if you're using Turnitin as a pedagogical tool, it's useful to them to be able to correct their essays before or their assignments before you submit them again. Uh, before you mark them, I mean. Store student papers in the standard repository. Yes. Um, and then you want to decide what you want to check against. By default, uh, you're checking against every possible um, 
source that Turnitin is able to check. So student papers that are stored, internet and journals, periodic periodicals and publications. So uh, it's maybe important to inform your students that if when they submit a paper, it will be stored in a Turnitin database so that um, you know, other teachers at John Abbott would be able to see that this paper has already been submitted at John Abbott, but also teachers from other colleges or schools that use Turnitin in the US or in Canada. Um, next, you want to decide whether you want to exclude bibliography, quoted material, and small matches. Um, so if you don't want to see um, you know, the, the quotes that your students use, you could decide to exclude them. I like to keep them just so I know what material my students are quoting and where it comes from, and if it comes from all of all the same source or if it comes from different sources. And same thing with the bibliography. Uh, you can plagiarize a bibliography as well. You can also choose to exclude those when you're in the report, so it's not a big uh, issue if you if you don't um, do anything with it right now. Grain mark option opens uh, the rubric manager and the grammar check, but I'm going to make that the subject of a different video, so stay tuned for that. And the last thing you may want to do is uh, common module settings. If you have two sections and they're in separate groups, of course, you could choose separate groups. Uh, and then you would save and display. Just to see what your assignment looks like. If you want to return to course, of course, you can do that. Um, this is the interface, and that's what it will look like for you. There's quite a bit of information here. So just to highlight some important aspects, um, the start date, due date, and post date that you've designed, if you want to change them on the fly, you can simply click on the pencil and, you know, modify the due date, the post date, for example, to November 1st, uh, and just click and it updates automatically. Another thing to pay attention to, uh, this little square here would enable you to select all submissions. So here I don't have any because it's a new assignment. Uh, and once you have your assignments selected, you could choose to download them. And this will uh, put all of the submissions into a zipped file uh, that you can download to your computer, just like Leah does with the assignments. Another thing that's maybe helpful is that you can upload student papers yourself. So if someone sends you an MIO to bypass Turnitin, you can still upload it for them. So you would just click it here, click on that little cloud, add a title, add the submission, and the report will generate. So this is an empty uh, interface. What does it look like for students? Let's change our role. So just in case you weren't familiar with that, Moodle allows you to change your role. So you just click on your profile uh, picture here and you can change your role to student. So you can see it's a little less busy, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, so if you want as a student to upload your paper, you simply click on submit paper, add a title, drag and drop your file in here, or you can click on it and upload it and add submission. And then the report should generate uh, within a few seconds to a few minutes. It's usually pretty quick, but if there's a big demand on the server, it might take a little longer, up to 24 hours. So I'm going to return to my normal role, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when students have submitted their essays or their assignments. So I should mention, you'll see, some of them have quite high, um, they have really high scores in the similarity. This is how plagiarized the essay or the assignment is. And you can see here it's 100%. That's because I asked my students to test this um, by submitted, submitting any random file and they all chose the same thing. So they're not actually cheaters. Um, so you can see that I, you could, Organize your essays either by last name, by clicking on submission titles. So if you just want to see who submitted, uh, you can prioritize submissions that way, or you can prior prioritize them by similarity or by grade 
or by date. So it's really up to you. Um, there's, and now we want to go into the assignment. So I'm going to click on this one and see what they submitted. So it opens a different window. Um, and you can see that uh, my student has actually uploaded their class activity. Um, and so if I click on this little red layer here, the top red button, it will highlight everything that's plagiarized. And here, of course, everything is plagiarized because um, many students uploaded the same file. Uh, the first thing I want to uh, click on maybe is to look at the match overview. So here it's 100%. Uh, this means that it's exactly copied from another source. And if I want to see which source it is, that's where I would click. And I can see um, it's submitted to John Abbott College. It's the student paper, so no uh, names will be revealed here. And if I click on uh, the source view, I can see uh, it's going to load, but I can see exactly how much it matches. And we can see it's exactly the same thing. Uh, next sources would be, for example, uh, all the sources that actually are similar to what my student submitted. So some are the, the full assignment, but this a uh, paragraph here is from a short story. So that short story is available online. So a lot of these 50% matches actually refer, for example, uh, to this paragraph uh, because that story has been made available online. So depending on uh, the sources, you want to see where it comes from. Of course, the more uh, a file is redistributed online, the more matches there will be for that source. Uh, I could choose to filter. So that's what I said earlier. If you didn't exclude quote or bibliography, you can do so here by clicking on the funnel. And lastly, um, excluded sources. Here I haven't excluded anything. Um, it wouldn't work in this case because I don't have um, quoted material. Or maybe I do. No, it doesn't show me anything. And so that would be my, um, my plagiarism report in a nutshell. I'll make a different video for this top layer here in blue. Uh, that's the peer mark, or sorry, that's the feedback uh, source. So stay tuned for that and hope it was helpful.